Well, today is the first Saturday of October, and the feast day is the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Today, we celebrate the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Where and when the rosary began is unknown. The use the use of beads as an aid in prayer has a long history both in the Catholic Church and in other religions. The chain of beads establishes a framework, a setting, a, a pace for the prayer, and the repetition provides a background for meditation. Even though the origin of the rosary is unknown, it is undeniable that its popularity grew significantly through the preaching of St. Dominic, who died in 1221. Dominic encouraged the rosary as a remedy to heresy. The meditation on the mysteries developed a foundation of the truths of the faith. And this saint also saw the prayer as an antidote to sin. As Dominic and his followers preached throughout Europe, they encouraged the laity to regularly pray the rosary. Many popes have also encouraged this devotion. One notable example comes from the reign of Pope Pius V in 1566 to 1572. At that time, the Turkish Muslims were actively seeking to conquer Christian Europe and were having significant success in their endeavors. Europe was in real peril. Well, Pope Pius V asked all the faithful to pray and ask for Mary's intercession that the Turkish threat would be halted. In particular, Pius encouraged the praying of the rosary. In the famous Battle of Lepanto on October 7th, 1571, the Christian forces defeated the Turkish fleet and effectively ended the threat of, a, of conquest by the Muslims. To acknowledge the effectiveness of praying the rosary and to thank the Blessed Mother for her intercession, Pius established the Feast of the Holy Rosary to be celebrated each October. The word rosary comes from the Latin rosarius, which means garland or bouquet of flowers. It is an apt word for a bouquet of prayers offered to God. The word bead is an old English term that originally meant a prayer. As with any sacramental prayer or devotion, the rosary can be a tremendous aid in drawing closer to God. However, it can also be misused. The structure and flow of the prayer is meant to aid the individual in meditation. The rhythm of the prayer can quiet the spirit and help a person be more receptive to hearing God and thus be formed spiritually. For some, however, the rosary can become a merely mechanical action, something to be rushed through as a duty. And since the grace of any sacramental is dependent upon the attitude of the person using it, devout and thoughtful use of the rosary is a prerequisite to enjoying the grace of the devotion. Now, the feast day today is called the Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, so let's talk a little bit about the Blessed Virgin Mary. Concerning the Blessed Virgin Mary in the Gospel reading for today, Mary, as our spiritual mother and model disciple, shows us how to face an uncertain future. She gave consent to the will of God in a variety of ways, and I'd like to offer up seven consents that I found through studying others' thoughts and meditations. 
Mary, number one, consented to the unknown. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Though Mary knows it will bring a mix of joy and suffering, she surrenders to God's will that she become the mother of the Messiah. And through her consent, she receives the gift of motherhood. He does not merely take up residence within her. She not only provides her womb in which Jesus grows, but she is the source of Jesus' flesh and his blood. She is the only mother whose son created her. And through Mary, Jesus becomes the God-man, our Savior, through whom we receive life. Mary's humble response to the angel's announcement is neither a prideful, you picked the right woman, nor a false humility like I could never raise the Son of God. She simply states her willingness to be available to do whatever God has called her to do. And like Mary, will we consent to bear new life? whether it's a spiritual or a physical life, or face new challenges without knowing the perimeters of how much will be required of us? Will we be available as she was? Number two, she was consented. She consented to serve. We can see this in Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 56. Though Mary is newly pregnant, she goes immediately more than 70 miles to serve her cousin, Elizabeth, who is already six months pregnant. Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, declares to all that Mary is uniquely blessed as the mother of her Lord. Mary responds with her magnificent, acknowledging God's tremendous work within her as he fulfills his promises to bring salvation. Mary stays with Elizabeth for three months, serving her. Then Mary travels home to complete her pregnancy. Mary chooses to serve without asking to be served. She reminds us of Jesus' words during his ministry, when he said, For the Son of Man also came, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark ten forty five. So will we, like Mary, consent to serve even when we do not feel like it? Another way that she consented, she consented to follow her husband. Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. Mary willingly travels with Joseph to Bethlehem to register their family in obedience to the Roman authorities. She trusts Joseph to care for her and the baby, far away from their families, who, who could have assisted them at the delivery. And then she births Jesus in a cave outside of Bethlehem. When Joseph tells her that an angel has warned them to flee, Mary does not second-guess him, claiming that, well, usually angels tell her what to do. She packs up their belongings and follows Joseph into a foreign land, doing what she can, can to preserve Jesus' life. Mary follows the promptings of her heart and the word of the Lord through her husband. We need Catholic wives like Mary to follow our husband's lead, especially when it comes to the well-being of our children. She also consented to a hidden life. And we see this in Matthew 2, uh, verses 19 through 23, and Luke 2, verses 19 through 52. 
See, though Mary knows the prophecy Simeon gave her that a sword will pierce her heart, she embraces motherhood, the joys and the sorrows. She exemplifies for us that the call to be open to life is a call to lay down our lives. Mary loves Jesus. She nurses him and cares for him. With Joseph, she takes him to the temple to be circumcised. She celebrates the Jewish feast days with him, like Passover in Jerusalem. She raises Jesus, knowing she does not fully understand him. She ponders God's work in her life. You can see this in Luke chapter 2, verse 19. And for 30 hidden years, Mary lives with Jesus. Mary is the incomparable model of how life should be welcomed and cared for. And undoubtedly, Mary treasured time with her son. But did she, like us, find the time went too quickly and he was no longer a baby, a toddler, a teen? Do we take time to ponder God's great work in our lives and our children's lives? It's something to think about. Mary also consented to love at a distance. Luke chapter 11, verses 27 through 28. Mary does not accompany Jesus everywhere he ministers, though others do. She supports him from a distance and binds her heart to his through prayer. While Jesus is teaching a crowd, one woman proclaims a blessing on his mother. Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that you sucked. And Luke eleven twenty seven, But Jesus refocuses the crowd's attention. He does not downgrade the debt he owes Mary as his mother. Instead, he highlights the impetus for her actions that others, like us, can imitate. He said, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Mary's obedient response to God's word, no matter the cost, is blessed. She is obedient in great and small things, and therein lies her greatness. Do we, like Mary, allow an adult child to assert his or her independence, all the while communicating our love, our respect, and support? Do we love from a distance? Do we bind our hearts to theirs in prayer? Something to consider. Mary also consent, consented to suffer, and that is why we call her Our Lady of Sorrows. John 19, verses 25 through 27. Our Lord needed his heavenly father and his earthly mother all the way to the cross. Accompanying Christ to Calvary, Mary consented to his sacrificial self-offering with her own self-offering. Will we, like Mary, offer our sufferings and losses, choosing to trust the Lord for what we do not understand? <clears throat> Lastly, she consented to continue to serve even when her child is gone. Mary's work is not done once Jesus is gone. From the cross, in the midst of his anguish, Jesus gives his mother to the beloved disciple, which includes giving her to us as beloved disciples as well. Mary receives him and us as her child. You can see this in John nineteen twenty six through 27 Mary lingers with the disciples in the upper room at Pentecost. She leaves her homeland and travels to Ephesus, Turkey, with St. John. And she is probably the source for St. Luke's infancy narratives. She reminds widows, widowers, empty nesters, 
and retirees, there is more work to do. So will we, like Mary, continue to serve the Lord as we get older, welcoming opportunities to care for others in Jesus' name? I pray that we will. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.